the host of Jeopardy, Alex Prevet. Do the talking. Super Sloppy Double Dare. We had a very exciting toss-up, and the blue team, they won that just by that much. And we have all sorts of good stuff coming your way, but let's meet our team, starting to my right. They call themselves the Cryptic Complainers. Say hello to Mike and Kelly. <laughs> How are you, Mike? All right. Oh, good. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second there. Now, it says you like to ride dirt bikes. Now, have you ever turned over in one of those things at all? Yeah, it fell on my head. Did you really? Yeah. But do you wear helmets? Yeah. Okay, that Got to be safe on that. And <laughs> Kelly collects keychains. How many do you have? About 25. And anything special you look for in these keychains? No, not really. Just to have a collection. All right, $20 on your side of the board. To my left, the team that calls themselves the Troublemakers, Trisha and Chad. <laughs> Trisha, what's new in your life? Nothing, really. No? Well, um, basketball season, we won every game. Well, see, that's exciting. That's good <laughs> stuff. And Chad uh, likes to fly, I'm assuming, in a plane. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> all right. Have you ever uh, thought about hang gliding at all? I um, thought about uh, parasailing. Yes. So yeah. You ever tried it? No. Yeah, it seems scary, but uh, it's one of those things you sort of want to try, but it's, it's a little nervous time. But anyway, let's talk about the show. That's more important. And this is a show where Daring for Dollars will double your bucks, and here's how it works. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you don't know the answer or think the other team doesn't have a clue, you can dare them to answer it for double the dollars. But be careful, because they can always double dare you back for how much, Josh? Thank you. Josh is here, and he is one of our associate producers. And uh, you're the only associate producer, aren't you? That's it. Well, there it is. And uh, then you can either answer that question or take the physical challenge. And good luck to the troublemakers. And Mike and Kelly have this $10 question. On what popular TV show does a main character have a buddy named Cockroach? Would bring you to 30, or you could dare them. Quickly before time runs out. Double dare. Oh, you only have to dare at this point. Uh, what TV show does a main character have a buddy named Cockroach? Cosby Show. Yeah, you're right. You've tied the game. Cockroach uh, is Theo's pal on the Cosby Show. <laughs> I'd like to know what position does Charlie Brown play on his baseball team? This would give you the lead by 10. Or you could dare them. Pitcher. Pitcher is right, and you've taken the lead. You had no money, now you have $30. Trisha, Chad, the troublemakers have control. In Cinderella, when the pumpkin was changed into a coach and the lizards into footmen, what did the mice become? Horses? Yeah, you know your nursery rhymes and you're now up to $40. You like that, Hugh? Hugh just loves that noise. He thinks at home that you want to hear this. Oh, there he is. Out of the sky <laughs> comes Sky King. It was Kirby Grant. That's another show. Uh, what did Christopher Columbus, Napoleon, and William Shakespeare all have in common? They all had red hair. Uh, each of them went by their nickname Knucklehead, or they were all over six feet tall. There. Okay, it's now worth 20. William Shakespeare, uh, Napoleon, Christopher Columbus. What do they have in common? Red hair, they all had the nickname Knucklehead, or they were all over six feet tall? You could double dare him back. First one. Uh, they all had red hair. You're right. Add $20. Whoa! We have a tie game right now. Kelly and Mike, according to the legend, who opened Pandora's box? Would give you the lead by 10. 
Dare. All right. Do you know who opened Pandora's box? Double Dare. Now worth 40, or are we going to take a physical challenge? Physical, physical challenge. Well, I know this is hard to believe, but uh, Pandora opened Pandora's box, and we have a $40 physical challenge over here. <laughs> and come down here. You seem like two creative people. Do you have any idea what these are supposed to be? No. How about you? Cornflakes. Oh, this man is brilliant. That is terrific. And I'd like you to jump right in here to the cornflake uh, container, if you would. Just go ahead, have a seat right in there. Nice job. And <laughs> when I say jump, he jumped. And I'd like you to come over here, because over here, we can't have cornflakes without raisins. And here are the raisins. Well, they're not actually raisins. They're sort of football-like things. And all you have to do is toss those raisins over to your partner. Go ahead and just toss one over and see if you can catch it. Great. Now, what you have to do is catch four of those. Okay, four of them. But we're going to make it a little bit more interesting because you see, uh, besides having raisins and cornflakes, what are we missing? The milk? Yes, and that's what's up above you. So after you have caught four raisins, then you must turn this over on top of yourself and put milk in the container, all right? That's all you have to do. You have to catch them in the air. Yes, you have a question? Do I have to hold the raisins? No, after you catch the first one, put it down second, third, and fourth, all right? Good luck. Let's see what happens. On your mark. Get set. No, you, before you do that, um, that seems pretty easy. And Robin is holding that blindfold, and we certainly want something to do with that blindfold, and putting it over your eyes would help us out. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Four raisins caught in the air, and then some milk in 30 seconds would do it. On your mark. Get set. Go. Toss it over there. Welcome back. It is still round one, and uh, the cryptic complainers, Mike and Kelly, tried to make cornflakes with raisins, and uh, we're not quite successful, so we now have $80 to the troublemakers, Trisha and Chad, and you know, we're spending lots of money on new physical challenges, new obstacles, but no screws. Look at this, folks. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see if we get that fixed a little later. Here's a $10 question for Chad and Trisha. In Alice in Wonderland, what animal slowly keeps disappearing until only his grin remains? Would bring you to 90, or you could dare them. The cat. Uh, we need more specific information, or you could dare them. Dare. All right, now it's worth $20. In Alice in Wonderland, what animal slowly keeps disappearing until only his grin remains? Double dare. Now worth 40 or are we going to take a physical challenge? Physical challenge. It's the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat. We needed all that information, and now we have a uh, <laughs> physical challenge right over here. Has anybody ever come up to you and say, hey, pal, I'm going to knock your block off? Anybody ever done that? No. No? How about you? No. Well, they used to do it to me in school all the time because I was a wimp. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to try and knock somebody's block off. Who would like to get their block knocked off? You will. You come right over here. You go see Robin because we are going to put a blindfold on you, first of all. And we're going to put a helmet on you and also some shoulder pads. And while Dave is busy doing that, let me come and show you what we're going to do. We have some gacked up sponges here. We have a whole vat of gack and we also have some sponges. And what you have to do is try and knock three blocks off your partner in 20 seconds or less. Now these blocks are attached with Velcro and his uh, blindfold will be on and he will not be moving at all. You just move right up here to the line and you have two blocks, one on each side and one on the top. If you can knock all three off of those sponges in 20 seconds or less, we're going to give you 40 extra dollars. Gee, aren't we nice people? On your mark, get set, go! Toss those things over here. Oh, that was cold, but so far it didn't happen. Ooh, uh, almost off on that one. Uh, there's one off. Yes, two more to go in 11 seconds. You need to go higher. It's all That was great. Unbelievable. You knocked them off, and we're going to add additional dollars. Great throwing there. I was really impressed with that. It was neat. I, I wish we could see that in slow-mo because you see it hit the top of the head and it sort of ricocheted off and hit the shoulder. That was great. And you now have $120. You knocked their block off. And uh, here's a $10 question. Comets, fantails, and lion heads are what kind of fish? There. Now we're at 20. Comets, fantails, lion heads, they're what types of fish? Would bring you up to 60 or you could double dare them back. 
Over there. Now it's worth 40. Do you know what kind of fish? Or are you going to take a physical challenge? Physical challenge. Goldfish. And uh, we have a $40 physical challenge for Trisha and Chad right down over here. <laughs> you see, we rented this outfit, and uh, Robin's trying to get her use out of it, her Fay Ray outfit again. It just looks very becoming. Now, last time you had stuff tossed at you, so this time your partner will go right over there, and you go over there next to Robin, and we have a trash kind of thing on. And, and I'd like you to move up forward here, Dave, if you would, because what I need you to do is show her how this thing works. What you have to do is push on this thing, just like that, and that sends the lid open. And, and Robin, why don't you just demonstrate exactly what we want them to do? You have some tomatoes over there. Go ahead, just lift it up there, Dave. And uh, not quite there, Robin. Do you think you can get in there one more? You know what? That's not. That's not exactly what we want you to do. Oh, there. Well, close enough. Yes, it got right in there, right in the back with Dave. <laughs> now, we want you to put that on. And over here, what do we have? Well, we have these tomatoes, and we also have bags of pudding. It's a couple of days old. And over here, we have some banana peels. And you know what kind of shoes you can make out of banana peels? Slippery. Slippers. Very good. I like this, man. Very clever. So in 20 seconds or less, you must toss one tomato in there, and it must land in there. Toss as many until you get one. One bag of pudding must land in there, and also a one... Uh, banana peel. And after you get that open, you can keep it open. You don't have to keep opening and closing. If that happens in 20 seconds, we're going to give you an additional $40. Otherwise, it goes over here. Good luck. On your mark. Get set. Go. Toss those tomatoes over there. You got to open it up. Open it up. Okay. There you go. Now, no, not quite in there. Oh, slippery. 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 idea you were throwing a lot of them but you closed it and that means two out of three doesn't do it let's add forty dollars over here nice try let's move up and play some more super sloppy double there forty dollars separating and that sound means it's the end of round one and golly they have hundred twenty dollars over here and we have over here guess what This is round two here on Super Sloppy Double Dare, and uh, that means all the dollar values will be doubled. And when you hear this sound right here, that means the game is over. We have uh, called this show Super Sloppy Double Dare, and it's not been sloppy enough, so we have decided to make human sushi. And the way we do that is we stick these people right in this uh, piece of, uh, well, I guess it's like seaweed. And over here we have some avocado and some big pieces of fish, and then a rice-like substance. And what you have to do is run over and put each one of those in one at a time and then dump your partner with the rice-like substance. And if you do that, you get $40 and control of round two. Good luck. On your mark. Get set. Go. Send that over there. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, good. She's clobbered. And why don't we pull her out of here? And uh, let's go play. <laughs> you got to come out the backside. All right. Come on over here. We have a tie score, folks, on Super Sloppy Double here. Well, you know what? Uh, the troublemakers got saved. And Trisha, you didn't get all that stuff on you. You are a clean human being. But over here with Mike and Kelly, <laughs> we have this poor lady drenched. And uh, you also have a chance to take the lead right now <laughs> at this $20 question. All right, in Roman times, if you stood in front of the emperor and said, we who are about to die salute you, you'd probably be involved in what? What kind of hazardous profession? Would you be a gladiator, a taste tester, or a sewer worker? This would give you the lead. First one. Gladiator, you are right. Add $20. You now have 140 and the lead, coming from behind now, Mike and Kelly, the cryptic complainers. In Scrabble, the letter Q, and what other letter is worth a maximum 10 points? Or you could dare them. Quickly. C. C is incorrect. It was the letter Z. No dare at stake, no money changing place, but you could tie the score with this $20 question. In an alphabetical list, which continent would be first? Would tie the game. Oh. Asia. Asia is incorrect. It's Africa. It comes before Asia. No dare at stake, no money changing place. Kelly, Mike, what magazine recently published its 25th annual swimsuit edition? Would bring you to 160. Sports Illustrated. Right. You have $160 and a $40 lead. What seafaring object is tattooed on Popeye's right arm? 
Wait a minute, can you repeat the question? Sure. What seafaring object is tattooed on Popeye's right arm? We bring it to 180. Anchor. Anchor is right, and you have $180, a $60 lead. Tell me, Mike and Kelly, oh, that sound means the end of the game with $180. The cryptic complainers have won today's game of Super Sloppy Double Dare. A come from behind victory, $90 a piece, and a trip to the Double Dare obstacle course. Trisha, Chad, a couple questions there you had an opportunity to get, and it didn't happen for you, but you were great contestants, $60 a piece. And Harvey, what do we have for him today? We all mark since you have us. What's that help with the science for the land? Welcome to the Super Sloppy Double Dare Obstacle Course, where Mike and Kelly are going to win this thing today. Let's win. I want you to get in, Mike, when I say go. Not just yet, but walk around. And the faster you walk around, the faster those lights will light up. That boxing glove will come down. You will grab that flag. You'll go right to obstacle number two. Let's find out the prize first. It's radioactive soundboards by Nash. We're all the soundboards of our notice paper. It comes equipped with a built-in AM FM radio. And you can listen to your favorite tunes while you shred. Mike can't wait. Kelly, now when you grab that flag, no passing. Just grab it and start to go through the ringer. Now, if you have any trouble, your job, Mike, is to turn this crank in this direction and spit out your partner, and she'll slide on down. She'll grab this flag, she'll pass it, and you will both win this. GMI's lightning pass roll a hockey game table. Super slick service to slap, zip, block, and attack. Test your reflexes. Exciting and convenient from GMI. And then Mike gets to do soda jerk, and you have to step on one of these. And I've always wanted to step on one of these, and this is what you do. You actually. <laughs> No, no, not me, guys. You actually just put this on it, just step on it, and you see it just comes off like that. And then you'll find the flag, and then you'll win this. It's the weatherproof Konica MR640, the perfect 35mm camera for the action photographer, featuring wide angle and telephoto lens on auto wide plus color grid film from Konica. It's a theme show. It's a weatherproof something there, Harvey. Yes, and here we are in snowstorm, and all that stuff will be flying around. Your job is to grab that flag, pass it out the other side, and we have another super-duper prize, don't we? Franklin's language master this time, Mark. It's a complete dictionary, a complete thesaurus, and completely revolutionary. The world's first electronic dictionary defines 80,000 words by Merriam-Webster. We're here at obstacle number five, and what exactly are you doing, Dave? Just picking the gack out of the toes, Mark. Okay, do you do this at home uh, when your shoes are off? No, I don't. No, you don't. <laughs> don't. You're a classy guy, Dave. That's why you work on this program. There is a flag somewhere in that gack. Once you grab it, you will pass it, and you will also win a super-duper prize. Right, Harvey? From Casio, it's the DH100 digital horn. It has six broken instrument sounds. You can play it with it without blowing into it. It's really compatible, too, from Casio. This is Mirror Maze. Now, you guys stand there. What you have to do is stay down like this. It's like doing a Groucho impression. And, uh, you know, boy, you keep running into the same person. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> it's Robin, alias Fay Ray. What are you doing, Robin? Just doing my makeup, Mark. I see. Monking around. Just monking around. I see. And then you come on over here, and you pass the flag, and you say, Javi, what's the prize? <laughs> it's the Baldwin Explorer portable MIDI electronic keyboard with 16 solo voices, 16 automatic rhythms, and built-in stereo speakers from Baldwin Piano and Organ. Company. Kelly, any questions? Nope. Mike? Nah. Are you guys gonna, gonna pull this off today? Number seven is the cage. You can crawl through the bars or you can open the door. You pull on that bell and the flag will be hanging up there. Reach up and grab it. Pass it to your partner. You'll almost be to the super prize, but let's find out what this one is first. It's Smith Malone. It's using the word Walk is obstacle number eight. What you must do is dive through this area first. Now you can go to the left or to the right, but I see the flag right over there. And when that clock has seconds left, all you need is 59 and a half. It makes no difference, but I want to see you win that in 60 seconds or less. And what's the grand prize today, Harvey? It's a super space adventure. Watch yourself into the future of the real space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. You and a friend will share the adventure of a right now with the space and rocket center. It's the largest space museum. The moonwalk into a real shuttle. Your Super Space Adventure, if you do it all, the Super Sloppy Double Bear. This is the way the course looks. It is very neat. It is very clean. We are going to gack it up right about now. We're getting the traction, getting your shoes clean, and you can hop in that wheel if you'd like. 60 seconds on the clock. Audience, let's really hear it today. Good luck. On your mark. Get set. Go, Mike. Walk around. Great job.
we've got the skateboard, the hockey blame, the camera, the Franklin language master, the Casio horn, and that Baldwin keyboard, along with the cash and surprise package of over $2,000 each. $2,000 each and all that money you won up front. And I think you find out what a lot of kids find out. It's a lot more difficult than it looks. What was the hardest obstacle for you? That one up, the, the uh, ringer, no kidding. And how about you, what'd you find difficult? Soda. Yeah, the soda thing, it draw, drops down on you and sort of makes you confused. But you guys did a great job, you got six out of eight. I wanna say thank you for being with us here on Super Sloppy Double Dare. We had a great time as always, I hope you did as well. Please join us Monday through Friday, right here on Super Sloppy Double Dare, bye-bye. Promotional consideration provided by Reebok. Every contestant on Super Sloppy Double Dare gets a free pair of Reebok sneakers. Reebok, the official shoe of Super Sloppy Double Dare. This is your announcer, Harvey, saying, join us back in next time.